Hello friends. Once again, let's kick the video off with a smallish indiscriminate shipping box from eBay. What's in there? What can it be? How am I going to use it to win fame and recognition on the internet while consuming power from a wall and heating my home? No one knows. We might figure out together, so while I awkwardly try to open the package with just one hand as I'm using the other one for the camera, I'll tell you about one of the current issues I have with my Santa ring. I use a pair of 1.5 terabyte SSDs in RAID 1 as a great white cache. This has been great for me for a long time, but for my current application, writes data faster than it can flush to disk, and thus the cache is slowly filling up with data until it's no longer an advantage to have it. This video is dedicated to all of my homies with a similar problem. Let's take two small white boys out of production and let four beefy black guys take over. I'll be using these four Samsung SM863 2TB drives and putting them in a RAID 10 striped mirror to act as a read-write cache in front of my struggling arrays of spinning rust. At the moment, simply logging into the Synology web GUI is a chore and what you don't know is the fact that I've heavily cut down the length of this clip to make it a less tedious wait for you. Opening it up just one of the volumes here, we see the smoking hot barrel. A cache consumption is at 1.4 terabyte with just 212 megabytes of usable space. In other words, a lot of data is waiting to be written to disk and no data can be fetched from the cache. Step one to alleviate this issue, of course, is to remove the old cache. This will take quite some time, since all the data has to be flushed to disk first. Skipping a couple of hours ahead, we see that the cache is now gone and what's left are the two 1.5TB Intel disks here in slot 6 and 7. We'll be using slots 5 through 9 for the four new disks, so let's mark the two here for removal before we'll physically remove them from the system. I'm sure I could find the disks without marking them, but I really want to show you the cool red LED. And will you look at that, the drive cages corresponding to the SSDs light up just like we told them to. At this point, it's safe to remove them and their adjacent drive slots from the system so we can get a new home to the disks. I'll probably end up selling the old drives as I don't currently have a need for 3 terabytes of combined SSD storage. Will that bite me in the butt later? Who knows. Going back to the web interface. Wow, the disks disappear. It's almost like they were disconnected from mains power when we pulled them from the system. And here are the four sleds from before, with the two existing SSDs and the four new. I like the Synology rack systems, but none of them have toolless drive mounting. I see a lot of negativity on the internet about this very fact, but I'm slightly special and one of my favorite pastime activities is using the screwdriver, so for me, it's a win-win. I guess liking to screw around could be the pathway to many different ways of life. And yet, here I am, in my attic, toying with the computers. Looking back upon the footage, it would have been a great time now to vacuum the sleds. But why spend time on being clean when you really just want to work on the machine? <laughs> Let's put bad puns aside and just hurry up and put the discs back into the system. Besides, it's a shallow pun. I spent a lot of time in the previous video talking about how I liked stuff to be neat on the inside and on the outside. Putting disc caddies back into place is another one of those calming and satisfying tasks that will make me almost want to do disc array maintenance just for the fun of it. Nice. Once again, this is what it looked like when the newly inserted disks show up in the GUI, letting us know that we now have additional unclaimed capacity to work with. To create a new caching array at this time, just navigate to the storage overview, choose a storage pool and a single volume on that pool. I'll then summon the creation wizard. As I said before, I'll be using read-write RAID 10, using all the four drives available. I chose RAID 10 over RAID 5 for the additional speed it provides over RAID 5. I didn't choose RAID 6, because it never ever makes sense to do so in a 4 disk setup. I could of course have gone with RAID 0 for maximum performance, but then I'd lose out on the write aspect of the read-write cache, which I clearly want. 
I'll be using less than the maximum capacity, both to get a round number which I like and also to over provision the space for wear leveling on the drives. I understand the dangers of not using Xenology branded discs, but I reckon that I'm in more danger by using a 10 year old system in the first place. At this point, just next 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 through the wizard and the system will do its thing, mounting the new cache array to the volume. Oops, not before a single storage node container crashes. Since I have additional space, I could mount the remainder on another volume should the need arise. And now that the volume is mounted, you will see that both the cache hit rate and consumption will start to change. I want to have as high as a cache hit rate as possible, and of course a consumption as large as possible to facilitate this. Ideally, I'd want as much of uh, the consumption to be reusable, which is the read portion of the read-write cache. People, beep, 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 boop, beep, 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 boop, beep, 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 it won't affect the message of this video, because you'll still get to see the cache in action. I've split the 3200GB into 8 cache slices of 400GB in front of each single disk. Looking at the disk overview here, you'll see that the temperatures are wonderful due to the fan changes from the last video and everything is healthy. The best way to check if the cache is working is to look at disk monitoring. We'll look at that here. The overview is not a specifically nice way to check the cache, as it's just a merger of all of the stats, as you can see down here. The real value lies within the view of the single disks. Here the trend is quite clear. Drives 4 through 8, the cache disks, are doing a lot of reading and a lot of writing exactly as we want them to. The other disks, the mechanical disks responsible of mass storage, are also writing a lot, at least considering their mechanical drives. Another concrete area to look in would be the storage volumes themselves. Here we can check the individual cache pools and we're looking for a high cache hit rate and a high reusable stat with a low but not empty occupation stat. Volume 1 here is doing great. So is volume 2. So is volume 3, although the cache hit rate is only 71% here. Volume 4 is also great. As with 5, as with 6, as with 7, and volume 8 is also doing great. It's so dumb.